Hello friends and welcome to my channel for another custom action figure video. I have finished Leonardo. I'm very excited to share it with you. Uh, first and foremost, I really want to thank everybody for their support on the Raphael video. I felt like I was making something cool when I was making this figure, but the response from everybody, the support, the new subscribers from it, the wonderful comments from everybody, I'm really, really grateful for it. And it really helped to inspire me to make Leonardo. I set out wanting to make all four of them, but it's, it's such an undertaking to make one of these that I was like, I don't know, we'll see if I get around to it. But the overwhelming support made me go, you know what, I gotta do it. I can't leave Raphael by himself. So here we have him. Now I'm not gonna get into the process on this one because I covered that all in the Raphael video. There will be a link in the description below as well as at the end of this video. So if you wanna see that, uh, please do go check it out. I go over the materials and what went into it. Leonardo's build was basically identical, uh, just with some different finishing touches. So let's go ahead and uh, get Leo on the workbench and take a closer look at him. So I wanna recap a couple things that are touched on in more detail in the Raphael video. Uh, but essentially my goal with these is to make more realistic turtle-like interpretations of the Ninja Turtles in figure form. You know, the Mezco ones are coming out, they look incredible, but I was a little let down personally because they're not what I personally want out of turtle figures from Mezco, right? Like Mezco is known for soft goods and the only thing soft goods about those is the belt, right? Uh, even the masks aren't. I actually realized while I was making these, like why that is. <laughs> so I'll get into that. But I was like, well, the whole thing I do with figures is something doesn't exist that I want. So I make it myself. So I decided to do that with these. Now, as I mentioned, the, I go into detail on the process in the Raphael video, but I will touch on a few things here uh, just for a recap. So essentially what I did is the arms and legs are from a Hasbro Lightning Collection Power Rangers Pudgy Pig. Uh, who's a, a Power Rangers villain. Uh, the torso underneath is, you know, Mezco scale, 112, various parts, basically. Uh, it's not pure Mezco. There's some other stuff Frankenstein in there. And then I took an olive green bodysuit, put it over the arms and legs from the Pudgy Pig, and painted them with a green leather paint. It was almost brown before, so now it's a green color. I painted the spots and everything. The shells front and back are from a bath toy that I got on Amazon. You can get like a four pack of different turtles for $10. I'll have a link in the description below uh, if you're curious what those are. But yeah, I took the shell from those and painted it by hand. Uh, it's actually two different turtles because I wanted the right mix. Just to save you all some time, this is called a Plastron and this is technically the carapace, okay? So uh, I'm gonna call it the shell, the front and back shell, but uh, people love to jump in the comments actually. So I'm gonna save you a little bit of effort there. <laughs> no, shout out to everybody who comments, I appreciate it. The hands and feet are from a Playmates 1990 movie figure that they came out with probably like 10 years ago now that I still had. Uh, you know, they were sort of the stand-in until the NECA versions came out. Uh, and I sculpted claws onto the hands and feet. And then these are from that figure as well. The straps on the back, the gauntlets here, the belt that's all hand cut out of brown pleather uh, and i'll have a link in the description for that as well and then i used an old bandana that i weathered up and dirtied quite a bit and made the wraps i did the same for raf now a lot of people were like oh those aren't weathered those look you should you should weather those i assure you they are weathered it's hard to see on here because it gets blown out and actually shout out to my buddy jonathan who is a videographer and a director who told me that if you put some white in the frame you see how that color changes? Look at that. Watch his, watch his uh, leg right here. See how much darker that got? So that is a truer version of what you're looking at here. So yeah, I just don't want to have this in frame the whole time. So just know that it is dark. It's painted brown. It's nasty. It looks like he's been walking through the sewer. So yeah. Now the head is hand sculpted, as was the Raphael. I used an epoxy sculpt that's a two-part compound that once you put it together, you get about an hour of working time before it hardens. And it gets pretty hard. And then I hand painted it. The head was a real challenge on this one. You know, the goal was I, I wanted it to not look exactly like Raphael. The benefit of doing this all by hand is that it's never going to look exactly like the other one because it's all, you know, changes each time because you're doing it by hand and not via computer. I think I was trying to make it look a little too different 
And so I ended up having to re-sculpt some stuff to get it to where it is now. And I'm very happy with how it turned out, um, but it, it took some trial and error to get there. The bandana is blue spandex. I actually bought some fabric to use, but it's just like a cotton fabric. It does not work for this kind of thing. It's not stretchy and you really need something stretchy to cover the different bumps and contours and stuff and actually like adhere to it. And the other fabric I had was just not doing that. It was actually the same stuff that this is made out of. It wants to hold the shape too much. And so I actually had like a blue bodysuit that I had for another build and I didn't need all of it. So I used the parts I didn't need to create this mask. I actually had to paint it darker because it was too bright of a blue. Now I mentioned that I understand why Mezco didn't do soft goods on their bandanas. Uh, it is because it is incredibly difficult <laughs> to do and I don't imagine they would stay put for people. This has double stick tape under it to get it to stick to the head uh, and take the shape that I want it to. And that stuff is pretty permanent, so I'm not worried about it coming loose or anything. I use it all the time on builds and it's hardy stuff. Uh, but yeah, all that is to say that it's difficult and I don't imagine mass producing something like that is gonna be even possible. So I get why they molded it. I do think that they should have fabric ones to plug in the back of the head, but it doesn't really matter what I want them to do because uh, I made my own and they're gonna do what they're gonna do, so. But I forgot to mention that this piece underneath is like a unifying body piece. This is actually from the turtle toy that the shell came from. It is kind of painted green a bit to match but it looks much darker on camera. Now with the bandana, I did it a little differently from Raph because I wanted it to sit higher because I really like how in the 1990 movie and the sequel, his knot sits higher. It almost looks more like a samurai top knot. And I just think that's a cool look for Leo specifically. And so I wanted to emulate that with this and that's why it's sitting a little bit higher. I'm very, very pleased with the final result here. And, uh, you know, I have his kind of blown in the wind because I just think that looks so cool for him, but it obviously can rest if I want it to. Um, these are, these do have like a jewelry wire in them to make it bendable so I can uh, articulate it. Now let's take a look at the, some of the differences between the two. So obviously Leo's belt sits a little bit higher. I painted his shell differently because again, I, I do want them to have some uh, noticeable differences between the two. They have different beaks from each other. You know, I want them to look similar, but not the same. So very pleased with the uh, aesthetic differences there. Leo's belt sits a little bit higher and actually his wraps all the way around. With Raph, I didn't, and I'll, I talk about why I didn't in the video for him. So you can check that out. But the shells are hand painted and they are painted differently from each other. Each one is completely unique. And then I gave Leo these gauntlets made out of the same pleather as the belt. Uh, I think it looks really cool as a swordsman that he has these kind of like extra bits, especially I'd love when a sword wielding character has like the asymmetrical armor for their defensive side. The articulation I won't really get into because it's the same uh, with the Raph figure with the exception of I do have a little bit more bend out of the elbows and knees because I painted these bent and then straightened them out. Whereas last time I painted them straight and then tried to bend them in it a little bit tighter. So these this one does have a little bit better articulation, but the fingers articulate individually still. Part of the goal with these is that they're fairly seamless because I don't want to see like a cut here. I love soft goods action figures because they look more realistic and seamless. And so uh, that's part of the goal here was to make it so you don't really see where the joints connect. You know, they're covered at the wrist and the ankle with the wraps, so that helps. So, you know, he's got your standard head swivel. You can look up, you can look down tilt side to side, etc. The most fun on this guy was the belt. I love doing those kind of details. And so, you know, initially I, I was gonna do the one where it's like the two straps going this way, like in the 90 film, but I needed something that would support the way his sores were oriented on his back. And I figured that way, you know, usually like in the old toy, they crossed and I wanted to do something that was kind of a mix of the two. So instead of having them cross, they do go both directions, but they, have these rings here instead. So I'm really happy with that. You know, it's something a little bit different than we've seen with Leo, but it's like still reminiscent of sort of the classic look for a lot of the, the comics and, you know, film stuff. Now, unfortunately, I don't recall where the swords came from. Uh, they are some third party company that makes them and I just found them online, I think via Google search. Uh, I bought them several years ago, otherwise I would, I would link to it. But something that bothers me about the way that swords are done when they're on the back. So this is, this blade has a bit of a curve to it, right? 
people will often invert them so that they're like this. The whole purpose for a curved blade, and this is why the samurai sword had a curved blade, so that it could be drawn while they were on horseback, right? So that it goes basically across the body in a curve, makes it easier to draw instead of going straight out, right? You know, especially if you're on horseback, your horse's head would be in the way. When it's on the back, same principle, right? It has to curve out with the arc of your arm. If you invert it and you try to pull the sword this way, it's gonna curve that way and your arm cannot do that, <laughs> or at least not well. Uh, and it'd be very clunky like in a fight or whatever. So uh, just, a, just a little word to the wise there, if you're crossing swords on the back or even just have one, the arc has to go that way. So that was something I made sure to do. But yeah, I, you know, I thought about painting these brown, but I like the black look. I like that it's kind of just adds a little bit of visual interest to it because if everything was just brown and green, it would get a little old. Now, something that I actually forgot to show last time was a size comparison. I recorded it, but I forgot to uh, put it in the video. Uh, here is Raphael, which is the same size as Leo. Uh, and he is next to the Mezco Justice League Tactical Batman. So you can see the turtles are shorter than a six inch figure. Um, you know, they're not the little versions of the turtles that, um, you know, are probably more accurate to the comic version, obviously. I would have made them that way if I could find stuff to do that with. So these would probably scale best with like a seven inch figure. For another comparison, here's Raph with a 1990 movie Leonardo. So you can see they are right about the same size. Uh, I'm not going to be displaying these with any humans, so I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, I'm going to eventually make a rooftop diorama for these. So for uh, kicks, let's see the two Leos together. And there we go, that is pretty dope, I have to say. It's fun to see them next to each other. Those NECA figures obviously are some of the greatest action figures ever made. I think a lot of people agree with that. And uh, it's fun to have something that is entirely unique in my own design. So pretty stoked to have both of those on the shelf. And just for fun, here they are with the NECA movie Casey Jones. So yeah, I like the way those scale with the seven inch figure. I don't collect uh, many seven inch figures uh, because they don't make them in soft goods. I'm, a, I'm pretty much a stickler for soft goods. So these will never be displayed this way, but uh, it's still fun to kind of see what they look like. All right, a couple of closing shots here of Leo in a couple different poses along with Raph. Now I do want to remind everyone that these were really difficult to make. I spent a lot of time on them, sculpting the head, coming up with this crazy recipe that nobody else probably ever would have thought of. Uh, and this is my personal take on the turtles for my collection. And they're going on my shelf where they will be loved and enjoyed. Everyone has a different relationship with these characters and this might not be how you see them. And that's totally fine. You know, we all like different stuff. Ultimately, I find creative projects most fulfilling when I'm not considering other people's preferences in my own art. So these were definitely made the way that I want them to look. And I'm very, very pleased with them. But hopefully you found this fun to watch and maybe even inspiring. So that is going to do it for this video. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I invite you to click the like button and hit subscribe and join me as I make cool stuff. Custom figures, dioramas, uh, vehicles to go with the figures. I review new stuff that I get on the channel. If you're looking for other ways to support this, I've got t-shirts available. My head on swivel shirt, as well as several other action figure and comic book themed shirts are available in my Redbubble shop. If you've never used Redbubble, it's pretty great. You pick the color shirt, the style, and the design you want, and they ship it right to you. Now, if you're not a t-shirt person, but you like comics, I've got several comics and graphic novels available, namely my books, High Crimes, Count, and Retroactive. High Crimes is kind of Breaking Bad meets Cliffhanger. Retroactive is like James Bond meets Groundhog Day, and Count is my sci-fi reimagining of the Count of Monte Cristo. Think kind of a, you know, John Wick meets Batman meets Zorro. It's a cool story with swashbuckling action and sword fights and vehicle chases and it's about redemption, revenge, and revolution. So those are all available at your local comic shop, bookstore, or at the links in the description below. So to everyone who's picked up a shirt already or one of my books, thank you so much. Like it means the absolute world to me and I, I really, really appreciate it. it. It really helps make it so that I can do this kind of stuff and bring you more videos. Couldn't ask for anything more, so thank you. So that is going to do it for this one. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.